So in this video we're going to talk about some basic basic derivatives and these again are using the formulas that are listed under the basic derivative formulas um, video so you can definitely find those should be a link pretty close by so again to start off with recall that it says that the derivative of a number in this case 18 no matter what the number is you just get zero so easy enough. The next example said if you had x raised to a power simply bring that power out front leave the x alone and then you take one away from the power. So the derivative of x to the fifth would be 5x to the fourth. Again now we have the derivative of square root of 20 but again square root of 20 is a number just like 18 is a number so hey you'll get 0. The derivative of square root of x, now that's a little different because obviously x is not a constant, it's a variable. So what we'll do is, in general when you have radicals, or in this case a square root, you will typically want to rewrite them so that you have x's raised to variables, excuse me, variables raised to powers. And in that case you can use the same rule that we did up here, where the number comes out front and you simply take one away. So let me see if I can squeeze him in here. So the 1 half will come out front. I'll leave the x alone. I'll take 1 away. Now, fractional exponent, subtracting 1, that's equivalent to subtracting 2 over 2. So we'll get negative 1 half. And we can rewrite this as 1 over 2 x to the positive 1 half, which would be the same thing as 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay. So uh, if you stopped right here, this is certainly correct, but in general in mathematics, um, you try to leave um, all exponents being positive, so that's why we rewrote it this way. This problem, you have to be a little careful as well. The first thing you need to do is actually simplify it down. So 10v squared, and remember if something's in parentheses, you, s you raise both things to the power. So 10 squared is going to be 100. Well, v to the v squared is going to be simply v squared. And now there's also a rule that says if you have a number being multiplied by a variable term, you can pull the number out front and simply take the derivative of the variable portion. So the derivative of v squared, the 2 comes out front, leave the v alone, take 1 away to the first power, or if you want to simplify that down a little further, you'll get 200 v to the first. Okay. And there's a way that you could do this. You could notice that this is a product. There's also a derivative rule that incorporates products called, aptly enough, the product rule, and we'll talk about that. Um, very shortly. And I was going to say one other thing. Uh, there's another way to look at this too. Um, you have to be careful. The first thing is since you have something in parentheses raised to a power other than one, there's also a rule called the chain rule that applies, and we'll talk about that as well. Both very common um, derivative formulas that you'll want to be familiar with. So for our next example here, we have basically the same idea. There's a 5 inside of here, so we can pull that out front. And I'm not going to write all this notation now. The derivative of x squared is simply 2x to the first. Again, the 2 comes out front. Leave the x alone to the first power. And if we simplify, that will give us 10x to the first. Okay. This one we have to be a little careful. And notice I'm going to use some slightly different notation here. Well, it says our variable is t. That's what this notation means. So I'm going to rewrite square root of t as t to the 1 half. And this is 1 over t to the 1 half. But I can rewrite that again as t squared minus t to the negative 1 half by making my positive exponent a negative by bringing it to the numerator. 
So if I take the derivative of this, f prime of t, and again, this notation, the little apostrophe, is referred to as a prime, and it simply means you're taking the derivative of whatever you had before. So I'm taking the derivative of f of t. Same rules, the 1 half comes out front. t, I'm going to subtract 1 away. So again, I'll get negative 1 half, like in my example over here. And there's also a rule that says if things are separated by pluses or minuses, you can just basically do each piece at a time. So I'm going to drop the minus in here. The derivative of t to the negative 1 half, well, the negative 1 half will come out front. t, subtract 2 over 2. Again, you're subtracting 1, but in fractions you'll subtract 2 over 2. So you'll get negative 3 halves. And if I want to rewrite this a little bit better, this is 1 over 2. Again, you can bring the t to the negative 1 half to the denominator. It'll become t to the positive 1 half, which is the same thing as square root of t. Now, I had a, a negative originally, but I got another negative from my derivative, so it'll become a positive, 1 over 2. And again, I can bring the t to the denominator, make it to the 3 halves. And t to the 3 halves is equivalent to writing t cubed underneath the radical. And then again, you have a square root, or a 2 out here, that normally we don't write. But we'll write it just to emphasize it this time. Again, another example, pi to the 4th. You have to be a little careful. It almost looks like x to the 5th. But again, pi is a number. Pi to the fourth is just a number. So that says the derivative of all of that would also simply be 0. And last but not least, another example similar to number 6 here. It says, again, I like to rewrite them first. So my 10v I'll leave alone. But I'll write my 3 over v to the fourth. I'll bring the v to the fourth up as a negative 4. And now I'll take the derivative of all this. So 10 times v. If you want to do this the long way, you could think about it as being, OK, so we'll leave the 10 alone. Again, you take the derivative of v to the first. So you'll get 1 times v to the 0 power. So I'm going to leave the 3 alone. v to the negative fourth. The negative 4 comes out front. v, subtract 1 away. You'll get to the negative fifth. And v to the 0 power, anything raised to the 0 power is 1, except for 0 raised to the 0, which is undefined. But if v was equal to 0 at the beginning, we would have 10 times 0. This term would be 0, and we just simply wouldn't write it at all. So we're going to make the assumption that v is not 0. So we'll get 10 times 1 times 1, or just 10. And now I have a positive times a negative. That'll give me negative 12. And if I rewrite v to the negative 5, if I drop it down and make it positive, well, I'll get v to the positive fifth. And there's our solution. So I hope those little basic examples make some sense. Obviously, you want to make sure you've got a good handle on these before you move on to any other problems. Um, any other derivative problems are just going to build on this and just get more complicated. So. Practice these, and once you have a good handle on that, take a look at the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule with me.